monster. Hey guys, Clone Guy here, and today I have you guys replay two replays featuring the E75. And in one replay, we're going to be using the 128mm, and in the other one, the 105. Which gun do you use? Which gun should you use? This is the question. I know, obviously, the clear answer is the 128, isn't it? Right? It's got more penetration, more alpha. But what it doesn't have is accuracy, gun handling, DPM, um, rate of fire, which I guess would be DPM, accuracy. It doesn't have all those things. Um, the 105 also does lack a bit of penetration. Its premium rounds, though, do make up for it. I think 285 millimeters on the premium pen. Which are more than enough to, if you know where to aim, to go through any tank in the game. Uh, I guess minus the Type 5 Heavy, that thing could be annoying. If that thing angles properly, then uh, 185, 285 will have a lot of issues to go through it. Now, which gun should you use? Well, you want the long answer or the short one. Um, let's just watch these games and we'll decide together at the end of the video which one should be used. Um, it's quite an obvious answer, actually. But um, I'm going to have some fun with this. So we are on Panama, a.k.a. Westfield Mercenary Edition. Uh, it's just a reskin of Westfield. I'm perfectly alright with that. Uh, they've changed the, uh, the town a little bit. There's no longer a town there. There's just a big old, like, almost a plateau-styled undulation. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, a little bit different. So, I'm platooned up with Gata Dinghy, Sinister Phase, and Catnip is great. Sinister Phase is my glorious leader of Nightmare. And enemy artillery have already been eliminated. There's a Type 4 Heavy there. Are we going to be able to go through him with our standard shells? Well, angled like that, we should be able to. Boom, it goes straight into the side of his tank. For quite a bit of damage. I can't see exactly how much it is because of my small, small screen, but it is what it is. So those of you who don't understand exactly how my recording software works, um, how my recording software works, and a lot of others, is when you are adding your voiceover, the image appears in the top right, your video appears in the top right, um, uncompressed, so it's super low quality and it's in the very small part of the screen and everything like that because it hasn't been compressed it hasn't been f f for formatted properly i guess i don't know i don't know what other terms to use but yeah it's, it's really really small and so that's unfortunately what i see is this small little i think it's like two f the 240p or something like that so it's pretty bad but that's what i see that's why i always hear me saying it's a small screen even though my screen is 2k it's a great screen I can see everything else just fine, but uh, it is what it is. But we're just putting shots in, and I was just buying time to, uh, you know, to give you guys what I do. The more I talk, the better. E100, Type 4 Heavy, lots of armor to fight, but uh, here's a mouse. We're going to be going after this mouse. We have our standard shells loaded, and so his standard shells against a mouse, you fool. Yeah, it bounces off his lower plate. So we immediately switch to our APCR shells because we were looking up almost at his lower plate and it still does not go in. I'm trying to get in close, make his shot as tough as possible. And yes, he does bounce off of our upper plate there. But now that we have our APCR loaded, we should be able to go through his lower plate. No problem. Yes, we do. We put it straight in. Here comes our T10 friend. Um, I think that's got a ding. He's coming up to his side. Maybe that's Sinister Phase. I don't know who is in the T10. But now we have his side now. And we'll be able to put shots into him from this location just like this put another shell into him damaging his fuel tank and now i'm, blo I'm blocking poor catnip in his light tank there but uh, i was just trying to stay with the uh, his tank there and uh, unfortunately i feel bad for catnip my bad there dude my bad now type 4 heavy he just fired we bounce our apcr shell right off of him unfortunately but there's a death star down below something we don't want to get hit by the type 4 did just fire so we will beat his reload and so this is something i'm banking on and so I'm just going to sit here and hopefully finish him off. But no, the Skoda finishes him off with his autoloader. Good job by him there. Now there's a Death Star down there with all the tanks spotted. And I figured, what are the odds he's going to be aiming at me, especially since I'm not the first one over the ridge? So I decided to poke over and we put a shell into him. And now we're switching back to our standard shells. We're not fighting heavily armored tanks. We do not need the premium anymore. Now, our standard penetration is 246 millimeters of penetration with 490 alpha. Our premium rounds have 311 millimeters of penetration. Also with 490 alpha. While with the 105, I think we have 226, 225 millimeters of penetration. I don't know exactly what it is. It's one of those. It's either 226 or it's 225. I don't know which one. 
it's one of those. So either one I say I will most like I will 50 percent chance I'll be off by one millimeter. I think it's 225. I could be wrong. So that's nothing to nothing to laugh about. 225 is you know it's decent. It's going to be enough to go through eights, go through sevens, uh, aim at nines, um, and then almost tens. That's actually a really decent penetration. But then your premium rounds on the 105 have 185 millimeters of 200 sorry 285 millimeters of penetration which is fantastic like i said earlier there's nothing in this game that will bounce that if you know where to shoot you know where to shoot you know yagpanzer 100 okay maybe not from this range uh, yagpanzer 100 angled like that we'd have to hit his cupola but still we can pen the cupola so it's you know it, it is what it is um, it is enough if you know how to aim. It is really, really enough. If you're willing also to shoot a lot more gold rounds, because you're going to need it against C75s, other E75s, STIs, maybe not so much STIs, but if they're hiding over plate, yes, you're going to need it against STIs, and so on and so forth, stuff like that. Now, we're going after this Death Star. Unfortunately, this is before they buffed the E75 to have a 40 km an hour max speed. And trust me, this is going to be the deciding factor, this speed, is going to be the deciding factor of this game. It's either going to make or break us this game. And, uh, so yeah, get ready for that. I will let you know when the deciding factor begins. So now it's a four versus four. We're up to quite a few damage ribbons. I can't quite see exactly what it is, but we have a Jagdpanzer 100 up here, and so we're going to be going after him. That is my next, uh, my next plan anyway. We're going to be going, I thought about, because of that E50M, I've decided I'm not going to be going up on my right. I'm going to go under the bridge first. Okay, we've got a batch at 25T up there and a Leopard 1 on our left. So this is something we've got to look out for. But uh, of course, we, we have him in our sights. And boom, we finish him off. Good. He goes down. Now, we just have this batch at to our right and the Yagpins 100 who does not have a shot on us from where he is. No, he does not have a shot. We're good. Now, like I said, I could have gone up straight there which would have been faster, but I thought, no, the E50M will shoot me in the side, so I'm going to go under this bridge. Now, if we had the the new E75, we would be moving much quicker here, and the E50M on the enemy team would be reloading much slower. He would not kill whatever he's fighting as quickly as he would. And so these are all factors right now we have to take into account. You know, if this was recorded a month later, or I don't know how long ago this was, maybe a couple weeks later, after 4.6, how would this outcome have been? Would, it, would I have been able to stomp even harder in my E75 because of my speed, or would the outcome not have changed? So this is something quite interesting we get to think about and ponder as we, uh, since we are looking at this after the update. Now we're going after this bat chat first. Clearly we need to get him out of the game. There he is. Are we going to be able to finish him off? Come on, gun. We just need to fly straight. Just fly straight. Boom! It goes straight and we finish him off. Now there's the Jagdpanzer E100 and the E50M down below us and we should be able to get some shots in them who are we going to take out ah uh, let's take out the e the Yagpanzer 100 all we have to do is shoot him in the back of the tank right now oh he backs up and we go to the top of his turret unfortunately and our last remaining friend goes down this is not very good i almost said preferable but that's not my thing i don't say that no well, now i don't i've heard it too much so yeah anyway we're gonna be putting another shell on him no we're not we're not able to find another shell now we're in a one versus two situation against two tier 10 vehicles um and they are both pretty healthy. So what you should do in situations like this is go quick. Go after them as fast as you can. The only reason I'm hesitant right now is because I know if I go down, I'm going to lose the high ground. And this is not something I want to do. I want to keep the high ground, but at the same time, I want to fight these guys one by one. So I need to get in there as fast as I can while the Yagpans or the E50M are as separated as they can be. But... Like I said, I, that would require me leaving the high ground. And so I have this decision to make. Do I leave the high ground to get as much damage done as I can as quickly as possible? And then probably get massacred? Or do I, you know, stay up here and fight? And so I've chosen the latter. I've chosen to stay up here and fight. And we're going to see how we do. They both got heat loaded. And that's going to help us out a lot. Heat from him. Heat from the Agpanzer E100 in just a second. Yes, heat goes into our tracks. And our tank absorbs. But now the E50M will have an easy shot into our lower plate. And he puts it in. But uh, as soon as we fix, what we're going to do is we're going to drive past the Zagpanzer E100. He's not the threat right now. We should be able to get another shot. We're two off before he reloads. So all we have to do is finish off this E50M. So I know this Zagpanzer is going to put a shell into me, but we can take it. So we put a shell into the E50M, and now he is a one-hit for us. If we can get but one more shell into him, we will be all good. Zagpanzer puts a shell into us, and now the E50M is going to get to our side, put a shell into us. But all we need to do is roll average, and we will be able to finish him off and then get behind the Zagpanzer E100. Easy feat. But no, we roll low. 
And now the E50M, all he has to do is put a shell into us, and he does, and he finishes us off, unfortunately, there. And we left him on just a smidgen of health. All we needed was an average roll. There was a 50-50 chance that we would have killed him with that shot, and if we did, we would have easily been able to flank that Jagdpanzer E100, because he had just fired, and he was out in the open. There was no place for him to back up to, and we would have been fine, unfortunately, there. But, alas, it is what it is. And, uh, yeah, that is the first game for you guys in the E75. A little bit of damage we did there. Not too bad, if I do say so myself. And we get ourselves an Ace Tanker on a defeat, which is always nice, because you know you've done well when you get an Ace Tanker on a defeat. <sighs> Welcome to a little bit of drama for you guys today. We had a little bit of drama a couple days ago. It wasn't so bad. Um, the comment sections were very full, which is what I'm showing you now, and this is between myself and 19 here, and I am allowed to show you this because this is on a public domo domain, which is YouTube, and I'm using this for educational purposes, and so yes, so yes, if you try to copyright this 19, you cannot. This is public domain, and so here we go, let's get into this. So, obviously, a couple days ago, I posted a video about someone from Chiefs called Magna Flash Boy being a bully. Um, and it wasn't a, just a small little somebody pushes that happens all the time. There was definitely a little bit of agenda behind it on my part. He, um, a few months ago, and and since then, uh, likes to berate me, send me bad, like awful messages, which I can't show you because it will demonetize my video just because just for the fun of it. So of course, when I had the opportunity to record and report somebody like this, I completely jumped on the opportunity we need him out of the community you know he's it's it's not fun for other players and that is my concern it's my opinion what's right and what's right is to report you know the bad guy he's the bad guy stop the bad guy and so that's that's what i did now of course 19 who is the leader of his clan got pretty upset because i did berate the entire clan i said this is the players you have in your clan you chose to let him in your clan being the leader so he is part of your clan therefore he represents your clan people in your clan represent your clan therefore if someone in your clan is doing something wrong it affects your whole clan that's my take on it um and i think that should be everyone's take on it. if you've got s some cancerous player in your clan get rid of it he represents you you wear the same tag he does so yes i definitely called out i called out him i called out his clan and so that's what i did and uh, so, yeah, he's very upset about that. He, we had some personal messages, which um, he was very smart. He he did something very sneaky. He added in the personal messages, it was me, myself, and Pants, or Sinister Phase, my clan leader. All three of us were in this conversation. Now, on Discord, when you make a conversation and you are the leader, you are allowed to close that conversation at any time you want. So we were having a conversation. I made some good points. He made some points. And when the conversation was done, he closed out that chat, so now it's gone forever, and I can't show you what we were saying. Very sly, very sneaky of him. But uh, I can go into what I was saying. He kicked me from GTL, just straight up, out of the Discord, um, because of my opinion in this video, which was different from his opinion. So he kicked me. He's like, okay, I have the power to do so, so I'm going to kick him, which I'm fine with, you know? He has the power to do so. I had the power to post this video. It's simple as that, right? Well, it gets even worse. Um, he was saying that the reason he kicked me is because clearly I have no regard for the league, Global Tanks League, because by berating him, I berate the league. And mm, my answer to that is I do have a care for the league, but I have a responsibility to do what's right. And what was right was calling out Magna. I called out Magna. Call out the clan. What you were doing was wrong. It's simple as that. I'm not going to sacrifice what I think is morally right for a simple league. It's just a league. That's all it is. Think about it. No players, no game. No game, no league. So this is Triary. And he doesn't agree with that. It's no league or go home. And, of course, all that is now deleted. So I got kicked from GTL. But because Sinister Phase, my leader, was in the chat as well, who is also the second half of Global Tanks League, he owns the other half of Global Tanks League, um, he decided, no, you shouldn't kick Clone Guy from there. He should be allowed back in. 
So yes, I was allowed back in. I have not joined yet. The reason being is because there is a condition. And this is where things make a terrible turn for the worse. I don't know how he thinks he's the good guy. Because I'm about to show you something. Kyle, one of my buds, sent me this. And uh, this is quite interesting, actually. So if we could take a look at this. Let's take a look at it. Again, sorry for... Sorry to ping you all, but due to the apparent lack of capability to be grown-ups on a few select people in here, he's talking about me, of course, and as the league is starting soon, your first time out will be a warning. From then on, if you're in a clan competing, the clan will be penalized 12 points, and then double after that. And then if you're not in a clan, you'll just get kicked. Blah, blah, blah. Simple as that. What does this mean? What does he mean by this? Well, what he means is, if I post a video and I say something that he doesn't agree with, which he deems um, inappropriate, or he doesn't agree with, you know, which he deems wrong, my team will get penalized. My team. And I guarantee his team will not. I bet you his team will not. The messages his clan members has, have been sending me since that video I posted have been awful, and they should get penalized. But they're not going to. You see, this is a dictatorship. He wants to control my YouTube. So my answer to that is, well, no. I'm going to leave then and make this video, which I'm making for you guys now. This way, my team, who I was currently a part of, will not lose any points, and I get to say what I want. It's my YouTube video. And he's been after me for a long time, because in a lot of my videos, I berate Unicums. It's what I do. I never name the Unicum. I just say Unicums. Like in one of my videos, E50s, in the E50, a lot of... I, I said Unicums. Unicums use the E50 to pad their stats. It's what they do. And I said, now it's not as good, so they're going to have to go find another tank, so suck it up and just go play a T-54 or something. And, of course, 19 took offense to that. He messaged me and said, you shouldn't be saying things like that because you're going to be offending Unicums. I don't care. You know, if you go watch any other YouTuber, they berate the, t the tomatoes, the green beans, the noobs of the game. I think it's about time somebody berates the Unicums. And I'm a Unicum. I'm a super Unicum, so I'm allowed to do that because I'm just making fun of myself, right? So there's my take on it. This guy has become a dictator. He's made his league a dictatorship. You're not allowed to say things on your own, my personal YouTube. It's my personal YouTube. But he is not letting me say what I want to say on my YouTube. If I say something he doesn't agree with it, my team gets punished. So no, I am not going to be part of that. I'm not going to be playing for GTL. And I will uh, I won't be willing to forgive this guy, honestly. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, you know. He's just a guy. I'm sure maybe he's going through something rough in his life and why that's why he's taking this so so badly. Just man up. That's all I'm asking. I've sent him an apology, but he will have none of it. So this is how it is. Um, but uh, like I said, I'm willing to forgive. I really am. But uh, let's get back to the video, guys, and get back to some happy joy joy. Welcome to game two. This time we are on Kitimat, I think is what it's called. I can't see the words. It is pretty much a Serene Coast. Once again, mercenary version of Serene Coast. Just a reskin. Um... I'm excited for the day where they bring actual Serene Coast back. Uh, is it back, actually? No, I don't think it is. I haven't seen actual Serene Coast in a while. I think maybe they think this Kinemat is a little bit better. But I want Serene Coast. Who else wants Serene Coast back? The OG Serene Coast. Come on, guys. Bring it back. Let's have some fun. This time, I'm just with Cannabis Great, and we are both in E75. So as you can see, I hadn't used this gun yet, so I'm switching back and forth just to see what my reload is. Like, what's my reload? What is it going to be? I can't see what it is exactly. It's seven-something seconds. Fantastic reload. Great DPM. And so you're going to be seeing that coming into effect here. And you're also going to be seeing the use of premium rounds. It's definitely needed. Of course, we used premium rounds in the last game as well. Also needed. But that's because we were fighting things like a Type 4 Heavy and a Mouse. This time, we are not going to be playing against Type 4 Heavies and Mouses. But we're still going to need premium rounds. Because our 225 pen is not quite enough to deal with some of the heavy tanks we're going to be fighting. And so, yes, if you choose to run with this, it is going to be more expensive. If you choose to run with this gun, you're going to have to expose yourself more if you want to get the same result with the big gun. With the big gun, you only have to expose yourself once every 13 seconds about. So you expose yourself, you fire, they shoot you, you shoot them. It's simple as that, you know? And you'll usually out-trade, you know, if you're fighting a Soviet medium tank or an American heavy tank, you know? They shoot you for 400, you shoot them for 490. It's a fair trade. You know, it's like, okay, that's a good trade, I'm willing to do that. So yeah, 
while with this gun, you gotta, you kind of have to shoot twice if you want to out-trade someone. If they shoot you once, you got to shoot them twice. And you have the ability to with this reload. Maybe not against British heavies. They're going to be yeah, about the same reload as you, if not beat it. Um, but against American heavies, if you go up against an E5, he shoots you once, you shoot him at the same time. Um, you can beat his reload and get another shot off. And then look at that. You've done 620 damage instead of 490. So yeah, there are good things about this, plus this accuracy. Look at that accuracy. That is nice and small. But like I said, you have to expose more. You have to risk your tank more. You have to risk your health more. You have to test your armor more. Is that really worth sacrificing? Well, we'll find out this game, and I will give you uh, my answer to that. I will give you the answer. I hope I have the post-game results. Looking at this, it doesn't look long enough to have the post-game results, but hopefully we do. We took some hits there, of course, like I said, because we had to expose ourselves longer to get more shots off. And that's something you have to look out for. Now, if we had the big gun, I would have shot once and I would have hidden. And then I wouldn't have come out to shoot him again and then got blasted by two tanks in the back. Because I would have still been reloading. So as you can see, I would have more health right now had I had the bigger gun. But then, of course, you don't get this gun handling. You don't get this DPM. This gun is definitely better, in my opinion, if you're in a flat-out brawl. If you're just going to flat-out brawl, as long as you don't bounce your shots, this gun will be better. Because of because it will hit, and it will... Um, well, it won't pen, but it will hit. And so that is that is the thing you have to uh, look out for. You have to do. This is, this is the truth. Now, I've just been trying to say something, but it's not, it's not coming out right. But uh, you understand, and that's all that matters. You all understand. You're not, you're, you're not five, right? Maybe some of you are, but uh, it is what it is, right? Now, we're just rolling. Once again, this is pre-buffed E75, so we are only going 30 everywhere, which, you know, is fine. In my opinion, the tank was good enough, and now it goes 40 everywhere with no nerfs to the tank whatsoever. It's just a monster. It's... This is literally a better E50M now. It's like, oh, E50M, guess what? We're you, but better. We have a bigger gun. We have more armor. We uh, we don't go the same speed, but almost. You know, 40 is not slow. Um, and why get to places quickly if you can't dish out the damage? Right, E50? <laughs> and we do. So, you know, that's, uh, that is what it is. Now, I've loaded HE because we're going up against a gorilla and a waffle. Both of those are very he we're going to see if we can get some shots in with our HE. There's a nice juicy shot right there. Boom! 413, I think, is what I saw. And Canop finishes up off with his own HE shell. We still have the HE loaded because there is a Gorilla 15. But uh, he's going to go down, so I'm going to switch to my AP rounds. And now we're going after this Jagtiger. Um, but we're going to loading our standard shells. Standard is all we need against this Jagtiger. He's got a juicy lower play. And if he's going to be giving us the side of his tank like that, we will more than be, be more than capable to go through. I would say going through his upper plate. Um, we have about a 40% chance, I would argue, definitely with our 225 pen. I think maybe even closer to 50% chance, so we could even go through his upper plate if we just were lazy. But we're not going to be lazy, we're going to use our gun handling and go straight into his lower plate. I'm angling for those guys down that way because I know they're there. And then hopefully we'll finish off this Jagtiger. Oh, down goes my friend Joseph, and uh, he's dead. Now we finish off the Jagtiger. What did I call it earlier? Did I call it the Jagpanzer? I think I did. It is just a Jagtiger. But uh, now, I'm looking at the team, and I think I'm going to be loading gold rounds in just a second, because of what we're going to be fighting. I might shoot my shell off first before I load it up, but there we go. IS-7, fire on the move, and switch to APCR. I didn't see a reason not to. And we're going to be pulling in here to hopefully get into cover. There we go, and now we're side-scraping. We're going to try to pen this VK. Eh, it's not likely, and we do not go in. So we're instead, I don't even think we hit him. Instead, we're going to be going after this IS-7. He's a much easier target. He just saw us shoot. So it looks like he doesn't understand. Oh, he set the pans around fire. And oh, he penetrates us. This guy, I don't think, realizes what gun we have. Because then we put a shell straight through his lower plate there. We probably could have gone for his upper plate. I think that would have been a better shot. But it looks like it went to his lower plate. It was a tough, tough to tell from that angle. But now the lower plate is definitely the better option. Unfortunately, that one was, was aimed poorly. But it still flew high into his upper plate. But now we have the side of his tank. Will we be able to get it? No, it looks like it gets behind cover. Unless he's dumb enough to come back out. Oh, side of the turret. Boom, goes straight into the side of his turret there. And we put another shell into him. And this is where the DPM just starts to cook. At the beginning of the game, we were really showing the DPM. Against the Tiger. we really showed the DPM. And there we go. We finish him off. We would not have been able to get the kill with the other gun. And we do, in fact, finish him off. And now all that's left is this little tiny light tank. It looks like we do have the post-game results here for you guys. Lucky for you. Are we going to be able to get a shot on him? We are going to be able to get a shot, but are we going to be able to hit is the question. Fire it off, and we missed. We should have stopped and aimed there. But I didn't know if he was going. we were going to be able to even get a shot on him if there was a ridge there or not. 
And then when I saw him, I just lobbed it and hoped. And unfortunately there, we did miss. And are we going to be able to get another shot? If we went 40 for sure, but no, T-51 finishes him off. So now the results. Which gun is better? Well, obviously, it's the smaller one, right? Because we just won. Absolutely. The smaller one is better because we just won the game. We lost the one game with the big gun, so clearly you all want to use the smaller one. Because look at that, we won, and we got an ace tanker. Well, joking aside, the bigger one, in my opinion, is definitely better, and I think most people will agree that the bigger one is better. Uh, it's just, you know, alpha. Alpha is king in World of Tanks. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys all enjoyed. If you did, please slap that like button, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you go check out Gotta Dingies and... Uh, YouTube and also Space Bandits YouTube links in the description below. Thank you guys once again for so much for watching. Hope you guys all enjoyed. Until then, this is Clone Guy or the Null Trooper. Take care, guys, and peace out.